Hi, this is Tom Soane and welcome to a drive-by episode of The Anonymous Landlord. And today I'm going to describe the three different types of landlord and it'll be good for you to find out which one you are. Or maybe you're a mixture of two, maybe you're a bit of all three, or maybe you are just one of these three types of landlords. So the three types of landlords are number one, a landlord, number two, an investor landlord, and number three, an anonymous landlord. And that's kind of where all this anonymous landlord thing came about, because that's what I am. I'm an anonymous landlord, I'm a classic anonymous landlord, and I'll describe that to you in a second and, and also how to get there. But I'm, I'm an anonymous landlord and an anonymous businessman, and I try and do everything as anonymously as I can. And what, what does that mean? What does it mean to be anonymous? No, it doesn't mean that no one knows who you are and um, you're faceless and hidden or you're hiding. There's nothing to do with that. Anonymous means that you are not doing it, but there's so much more to it than that. So let's start with the first type of landlord, which is a landlord. Now, your classic landlord is the one that manages their own property, finds their own tenants, goes round fixing things at their property or properties, doing all the maintenance, doing all the DIY, taking all the calls from the tenants and collecting the rent and chasing rent arrears and evictions and every single thing that is needing to be done on a letting with a tenant or with a tenancy or in the property, a landlord, a classic landlord, does it all themselves. There's some major risks involved in doing that, major risks. And I don't think landlords fully understand or even are aware of those risks, quite serious risks actually, but that's for another video. So your classic landlord takes on all those risks and the hope is that they're building a bit of a nest egg, a bit of a cash pot for the future. Maybe it's for their family, maybe it's for cash flow now, or maybe it's a bit of both. Whatever it is, they feel their natural instinct is to do all of the work themselves so that they can save money on things like letting agent and contractors and all of those types of things, finding tenants. So that is a classic landlord. Is that you? Is that do you kind of relate to that or or do you think that there is a bit of a or maybe some parts that I'm missing to the classic landlord but I think you get where I'm going with that your classic landlord is your DIY do it all themselves I don't need nobody to do it I'm happy uh, or maybe not happy <laughs> doing everything and taking it all on myself now you normally find that those types of landlords don't tend to grow as a business. Now, I'm not saying that is in every case, because there are some landlords that build teams around managing their own property. Fine, I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the landlords that have got one, maybe two properties, they've invested their money well, and they do the whole thing themselves. They tend not to grow, or not grow too much. They also don't tend to optimize their income and expenditure. They don't tend to maximize on their um, profits or their, their tax and all of those things. Quite often they own the properties personally as well, which, you know, at the moment isn't always tax efficient. So that's the first type of landlord. I'd be interested to know if, if you are that landlord and how you feel about it, whether you do it out of uh, a distrust for letting agents or anybody else managing your property maybe, or maybe you just feel like you wanna make the saving, you wanna save the money on outsourcing that stuff so you take it all on yourselves. And I'd also be interested to know if you're that sort of landlord, whether you know all of the risks. And I'm not just talking about risks of having to deal with tenant situations yourself or property situations. I'm talking about risks from a legal perspective, a compliance perspective, legislation, and something called vicarious liability. And really, what all of the liability you take on as a landlord, even if you instruct an electrician or a plumber or a builder or anyone, 
what sort of liabilities you're taking on. I'd be interested to know if you, if you as a, a DIY landlord know all of those liabilities. I'm not trying to witch hunt either, actually. I'm just genuinely curious about what people's reasons are and their drivers are to do all of that themselves. So yeah, let me know if you don't mind. Um, you can email me, you know, just, just send me a message through Facebook, that's probably the easiest way. Or you can just email me, tom at pinkstreet.co.uk. Anyway, the second type of landlord is your investor landlord. And I love these people because they have a genuine entrepreneurial act, attitude, mentality, and they're on their way. So your investor landlord could actually be part classic landlord and part anonymous landlord. But your investor landlord is genuinely a landlord that keeps an eye on the profit, keeps an eye on the, um, uh, the income and the expenditure and is constantly analyzing the property like a business and is also growing and buying more properties and they're investing well. They're using the profit that they're making from the property. They're using the appreciation or the growth in the value of their property. And they're financing. They're using finance in order to fund more properties or to add value to their existing properties. And either way, what they are is exactly what they sound like. It's an investor landlord. Someone who is a landlord, but has an investor mentality. So I love those guys because they're people that are really looking forward and looking to grow and expand and improvise, not improvise, optimize. So are you an investor landlord? And are you a DIY investor landlord or are you having your properties managed by a letting agent? And if you are, how did you choose that letting agent? What did you look for? And what are your fears with that letting agent. That's interesting. I'll be really keen to find that out, if you don't mind sharing that with me. So if you're an investor landlord and you're looking to grow, what are you looking for? Hey, you never know, I might be able to help you out with that. Because I actually find, um, I'm a property broker by default, so uh, what that means is I've got a lot of property sourcing agents that work with me, that bring me properties because I'm connected to so many investors and landlords and quite often I do landlord to landlord sales. You've told me, you've heard me mention that before. So hey, if I can work with you and help you find your next property, let me know. I love it. It's kind of it's kind of my favorite thing to do, getting those properties and connecting people up and seeing the end product, seeing the journey, seeing the project. So yeah, are you an investor landlord? I'd be really keen to find out what makes you an investor landlord. What you see as your challenges with being an investor landlord. And the third type of landlord, this is the pinnacle. This is the ultimate. And actually, this is where I think everybody somewhere in their mindset would like to be at some point. And please correct me if I'm wrong about this because the third type of landlord is the anonymous landlord. Now that is a landlord where they don't have any involvement in their property, in the tenancy, or the management, or the compliance, or the legislation, or any processes, what they do is outsource everything so that they can receive the income and they can still work on it like a business and analyze it like a business, absolutely. Do what you enjoy doing. But an anonymous landlord has everything done for them. Everything is systemized, everything is automated, everything has a set process which is carried out by somebody else who is better qualified, has more time, and better placed with better resources to be able to complete those tasks at a better quality. Now, yes, that does cost you money, but it also gives you time. It gives you time, it gives you relief. It enables you to focus on you and your family and growth, if you want to, other projects, your own business, whatever it may be, holidays, whatever without having to get involved, without taking on much risk. And for me, for an example, being, I am the, the ultimate anonymous landlord because I don't do anything with my properties. I look at the books, I look at the income, I look at the expenditure, I optimize that, but I instruct other people to optimize it for me. I instruct other people to analyze it for me. 
and they give me the highlight information, they give me the information that I want, and but they take action. I don't have anything to do with the management, I don't know my tenants, I never speak to them. In, in a good way, I'm not talking about that negatively either. I think it's positive to do that, because then your letting agent, or my letting agent, yes, all right, I own my own letting agency, Pink Street, but, you know, that's that I've built that over a number of years. Um, but certainly, I treat my properties and my letting agent like anything anyone else would, in that I don't have day-to-day -day involvement in my properties, even though I own the, the letting agent. And you should be no different. If you want to be an anonymous landlord at some point, then you either employ a letting agent that can make you anonymous, they're hard to find by the way, or I'll actually I'll help you find those letting agents wherever you are in the country. If you let me know where you are in the country, I'll link you up with letting agents that I know are good. Or if I don't know any letting agents in that specific area, which is quite unlikely, but if I don't, then I'll just tell you that I don't. And I'll tell you what to look for in an agent like that. But anyway, outsourcing everything. So look, if you're gonna use a letting agent, then there are, a certain, there are certain questions that you must ask of a letting agent if you want to be anonymous. Again, that's a different video, but or, or talk to me privately and I'll help you out with that. But the point is that you become anonymous. If you're gonna do that yourself, which you can, then it's the same thing. You just outsource everything. Now the challenge that you might face is that if you try and outsource everything yourself, you may well spend a little bit more money just purely because a letting agent's power is that they buy in bulk. And as you know, like anything, if you buy in bulk, you're probably gonna get it for a bit of a discount. Um, but you can still do it yourself. You outsource everything. You outsource the tenancy management, the, tenancy, the tenant finding, the compliance, the legislation, the rent collection, the income and expenditure, the accounts, the tax, the legal stuff, the contractors. There are systems that you can employ, IT systems, technologies, people, that will enable you to be anonymous by yourself. And I can totally recommend it because what's the point in making a load of money from property if you've got no time to bloody enjoy the money? If you're spending all your time running around for tenants, getting keys changed and fixing windows <laughs> and all of those things, calling plumbers and organizing locksmiths and electricians at, at midnight on Christmas day. Midnight on Christmas day? Oh, you know what I mean. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. So you can do all of that yourself. Yes, you can be a classic landlord or you can have somebody manage it for you. You can have someone do everything for you. You can be a bit of both as well. And look, there are agencies that provide this sort of service. My agency certainly do. But you, you can outsource some things and keep control of others. Like for an example, I don't, there are agencies that provide this service. So my agency certainly do for an example. So what my agency does is they take over what's called a DIY management. It means that my company looks after the compliance, the legislation, all of the legal stuff to make you compliant as a landlord, to make your tenancy compliant, to make your property compliant for the tenant, and to guide you in future compliance. Compliance meaning legislation, the legal stuff, the legal processes, the right processes, the right documents, the right templates, um, all of those sorts of things. And then ongoing provides a support line for landlords who can ask any question and find out the right answer, the right way to handle that tenancy. But then along the way, you can then pick up parts of that service. So for an example, I have a system which collects the rent from the tenant and transfers it immediately to the landlord all in one transaction. And that's an automated system. It costs me a lot of money, but I've got a lot of landlords that use it. So it covers itself and it's profitable for me. Um, and by the way, a good letting agent must be profitable. Please landlords, look for a letting agent that is profitable. If they're not profitable, stay well away. I promise you. Anyway, so you can use 
that service of mine or you can use that service from other agents that provide that service it might it might just be that and also by the way if the tenant contacts the agent for any maintenance issues repairs any emergencies then they are immediately forwarded to you they don't take any action unless you pick up the phone and say oh can you just sort that out for me mr and mrs letting agent thank you or pink street if you want pink street to do it and really what it is is exactly what it sounds like it's diy management meaning pink street my company take care of the legal the compliance the the nitty-gritty of management and everything that is a bit of a gray area that some people feel with trust like for an example getting contractors out collecting rent all of those things is automated for you so you actually manage all of those things so if, look hey obviously i'd be silly if i didn't say hey if you want pink street my company to look after those things for you then of course let's talk about it um, or if you want me to connect you up with a, a letting agent local to you that also provide that sort of service then let me know and i'll happily connect you up what i'm getting around to saying is you can be part anonymous you can be part investor and you could be part classic landlord if you want to be you just need to know which bits to outsource which bits to keep yourself but eventually i'd be interested to find out is everybody who listens to this or watches this is everybody's intention to eventually become an anonymous landlord where you don't have any involvement in your property investments. They are to every single aspect and every single component of your property investment is looked after for you, including growth. And I'll come back to that because again, something that I do quite a bit of is, I don't really know how to label it really, but it's best described as wealth management, I suppose, or whatever, which is where I, advise you on the next growth for your property investment portfolio or your property investment business and then i'll help you invest that money in the next property i'll help you refinance the current property portfolio i'll help you grow so no i hope that helps the three types of landlords yeah classic landlord a diy classic landlord now there's a lot of old school involved in that and there's nothing wrong with doing it as long as you know your gigantic amount of liability and risk that you probably don't even know about. Even when it comes to things like instructing a plumber or a, an electrician or a plasterer or a blacksmith, blacksmith, locksmith, a <laughs> blacksmith, a locksmith, anything like that, there are major risks on you now, Mr. and Mrs. Landlord. Um, so it's really interesting to find out who knows what about that. And if you want me to help you with that, just give me a shout. More than happy to share uh, a little guide that I've put together for DIY landlords to help them work through the compliance and the, the legislation. Um, all right, I think I'm getting to the end now. So the second type is obviously your investor landlord, the landlord that's, that's uh, a landlord, but also looking to grow, looking to reinvest, looking to continue investing, grow the portfolio, keeps an eye on the books, keeps an eye on the business of the property, income, expenditure, profit, loss, appreciation, refinancing. And then you've got the ultimate, the anonymous landlord. 